In this lesson we're going to be returning to trigonometry and the way we're going to be uh, starting our discussion of trigonometry is actually to introduce a new type of angle measurement. Some of you may be familiar with this already. Um, there is a type of measurement called a radian measure. Now you are almost certainly familiar with the idea of degrees as an angle measurement. So a full circle represents 360 degrees. But radian measure is actually a much more natural way to measure angles. The only problem with radian measure is that it introduces some awkward numbers. So it's a natural way of doing this, but unfortunately the numbers aren't always very nice to deal with. So the way that we get to radian measure is that we define an angle as the ratio of the arc length compared to the radius. So the arc length is if you were if you started at this point on the circle and you started walking along the circumference of the circle if you walked a certain distance along that circumference and you divided that distance by the radius of this circle that would be one way that we could define the angle that you had actually walked around but from there it's actually not a very long um, set of steps if we imagine the entire circle, well a circle itself, given radius r, the total distance around the circle is known as the circumference. So the circumference around a circle is 2 pi r. That's just some basic geometry. Another way of describing angles is using something known as degrees. Now there's nothing special about degrees. Degrees are a system of angle measurement that were defined Actually, this is one, the history of degrees are actually not very well known. I tried to research this so we could talk about this as part of the lesson. But it does tend to produce numbers that are a little bit easier to work with. So regardless of that definition, uh, the difference between degrees and radians is like talking about the difference between meters and, and yards or kilometers and miles. They're just different ways of measuring and there'll be times where one may or may not be more convenient than the other. So if we've got this definition of an angle and we know that the total distance around a circle is 2 pi r and this definition says that the angle is going to be the arc length divided by the radius then one full rotation around the circle is going to be a distance of 2 pi r divided by r and the r's divide out and we end up with 2 pi. But that one full rotation, which we could actually say here, that this is also the same as one turn of the circle or one rotation of the circle. all of these things mean the same thing and they also mean the same as 360 degrees so it's just a matter of changing your perspective on this now let's talk a little bit about how are we going to make that change because in all likelihood you've been working exclusively in degrees up until now so there is going to be some adjustment required now to make that adjustment I'm, adjustment, I'm going to remind you of a couple of tools that we use in mathematics one tool that we can use is adding or subtracting zero and another tool that we can use is multiplying or dividing by one and both of these tools and they're often referred to as tricks the only reason we might call them a trick is because it might not always occur to people that these are things that they can or should do so we use these tools in order to modify some expression algebraically without actually changing its value or its meaning and of course I can add or subtract 0 to anything and I don't change it I can multiply or divide by 1 and I don't change it if we start with the idea that 2 pi as a measurement of a circle is the same as 360 degrees as the measurement of one full circle we can also express these as a ratio I could divide both sides by 360 degrees which would give me the ratio 2 pi over 360 but if these two things are equivalent to each other then that means the ratio of e these things to each other must be 1. Similarly, I could have done my division of both sides by 2 pi, and then I would have gotten 360 degrees over 2 pi. And 
the reason why this works is because we're basically saying that this is one full revolution of a circle compared to another full revolution of a circle well they should stand for the same thing and it's just like forming a ratio of saying that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds these two things mean exactly the same thing and I might use a ratio like this if I was converting between units where I had minutes and seconds. So we're going to use one of these two ratios. In this case, we're going to be looking at radians and degrees. And we're going to be making conversions with those. Now, we can see there's a common factor here of 2. 2 goes into 2 and it goes into 360. So I could actually write these ratios either pi over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi. And which one you use just depends on which, type, which unit do you want to keep and which unit are you trying to get rid of. So the best way to illustrate that is with some examples. I'm just reminding you up here of the ratios we're going to use. So let's start with A. We've been asked to convert each of the following angles and implied in that is we want to convert the angle from its current angle to the other type of unit. So if I want to convert the angle of 20 degrees, that means that I want to get rid of degrees and I want to replace it with radians. It's okay for you to write radians as a unit. So if you want to, you could write this, especially as you're getting started with this. But in general, we don't write radians as a unit. Radians are, because they are the natural unit for measuring the angle uh, we actually it is a unitless quantity so you might do that as a placeholder to start but I want you to move away from that eventually I just want you to express them as unitless quantities but if you put rads in there that's okay you're just trying to be clear so 20 degrees I want to get rid of the degrees and I want to replace it with radians so the way I do that is I multiply by 1 but multiplying by 1 in this case is actually I'm going to multiply by this ratio. And by doing this, you can see I've got degrees in the numerator, I have degrees in the denominator, and so the degrees are going to divide out and disappear, and it's going to leave me with an answer in radians. Now in this case, I also have the fact that 20 goes into 20 one time, or you could even say 20 degrees goes into 20 degrees one time, and 20 degrees goes into 180 degrees nine times. And so from this, we actually end up with our answer, which is pi divided by nine, or you might write this as one ninth pi. And as I said before, if you want to write this as rad or radians, that's okay, but in math we try to be quite condensed with things you don't probably want to have to write this out every time so I again I recommend when you make that conversion you just go ahead and leave it in its natural form which is that number how about B we've got 225 degrees and to do this conversion again I'm trying to get rid of degrees I've got degrees in the numerator so I want to have my conversion with degrees in the denominator and again once again I've got some common factors here so in this case uh, it's a little bit more involved in this case we've got 5 so 5 degrees goes into 225 45 times if I've got that right 5 times 45 yep and 5 goes into 180 degrees it's going to go in there is that 36 times? Yes, it is. So in this case, we have 45 over 36. But if I take a closer look at that, oh, hold on. 45 and 36 have a common factor because I see that 9 goes into this one 5 times and 9 goes into this one 4 times. And so I end up with my final answer being 5 pi over 4 is my angle. And of course, you can see I did this in multiple steps. And there would have been no trouble if I had not done it all here. I could have done this one after the other. You should really be looking for exact answers wherever possible here. 
And because we want an exact answer, that's a good reason why we leave that as pi. Okay, so we're not going to change that pi into 3.1415, etc. You really want to avoid that unless it's absolutely necessary. So let's go on. The next one we've got is C, and that is the angle 5 pi by 6. And since there are no units written here, it is understood that this represents radians. Don't make the mistake of thinking that just because there's a pi there, it's radians. You're almost certainly correct in assuming that, but the one time you make the assumption that you could be wrong, you're going to pay for it. So in this case, it's because there are no units. So it is understood that we're measuring this angle using the natural units. And so we have 5 pi by 6 radians. So the way that we convert this to degrees is we use this other form. And this is where thinking of the units. So this is 5 pi by 6 radians. So that's pi radians in the denominator. So the radians are going to divide out, if you think of it that way. And we'll replace that with degrees. So I take a look at this, and I do have an opportunity to do some common factors here. Because I can see that 6 goes into 6 one time. And 6 goes into 180. The degrees are still going to be there. So 6 goes into 180 30 times. And then my result ends up being 5 times 30, which is equal to 150, multiplied by pi degrees. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this as your final answer, except for the fact that I just made a mistake, of course. Let's try to fix that. And the mistake I made is the fact that I've got a pi here. Pi goes into pi once, and pi goes into pi once. So there's no pi in this answer. It's actually just 150 degrees. Sorry about that. I'm glad I caught it as quickly as I did. And finally, we have this one, 1 1.75. Again, there are no units here. This could easily be degrees or radians, but because there are no units, then we know that this is radians. So our conversion ratio is going to be 180 degrees over pi. In this case, this pi is not going to go away. And so we actually end up with uh, 1.75 times 180 degrees. We just have to go ahead and multiply that out. So we end up with, um, let's see, 1 and then 3 quarters of 180. And I think I'm going to rely on a calculator for this one. And unfortunately, I don't have a calculator handy, so I'll have to do this the long way. So 1.75 is the same as 7 over 4 times 180 degrees so 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 180 45 times and then we get 7 times 45 is 280 and then 7 times 5 is 35 so I believe that works out to be 315 I'm just going to double check that 7 times 4 is 280 or 7 times 40 7 times 5 is 35 so 280 plus 35 is 315. So this works out to be 315 degrees over pi. You might say, well, hold on. Doesn't that mean these are radians? And this is where the idea that it's, it's a unitless quantity. The only units that are expressed here are degrees. Now, this one would be understandable if you decided to convert this to some rounded, <coughs> excuse me, to a rounded value. But I would really say that's not necessary in this case. This is a perfectly legitimate way to express it. Not necessarily comfortable for those of you who are new to radians, but it is valid. OK, so there are a bunch of conversions as examples. Now, some other things that we need to remind ourselves of for starting to look at trigonometry again. The first one is just the idea of some basic right angle trigonometry. So Sokotoa, this little mnemonic that we use to remember that sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So for a particular angle of interest, this we always identify our angle of interest. And then we identify the three sides that go along with it. So 
There's the hypotenuse, which is defined with respect to the right angle. There is the opposite side, which is defined with respect to the angle of interest. And there's the adjacent side, which is defined with respect to the angle of interest. So that angle of interest can actually be in either of these two corners. And depending on which corner it's in, the opposite and adjacent sides are going to move back and forth. The right angle never changes, which means the location of the hypotenuse across from the right angle also never changes. The other thing I'd like you to remember is the special triangles. So these are triangles, and I really should have these corners marked as right angles. These are triangles that come up very frequently in mathematics, and they have fairly convenient side lengths. So when you are dealing with the special angles, or, a relate, or if the special angle is one of your related acute angles, you really should be expressing your answer whenever possible in, a, in terms of exact values using these special triangles. So part of the homework for today's lesson, for this lesson, is going to be to review some of these ideas and apply them. Now how does that work? How do these special triangles change when we're working with radians? It's just conversions. So instead of 30 degrees, for example, we multiply that by pi over 180 degrees and I see that 30 goes into 30 once and 30 goes into 186 times so the angle 30 degrees is the same as the angle pi by 6. The angle 60 degrees it turns out is equal to pi by 3 and the angle 45 degrees so 60 degrees is the same as the angle pi by 3 and 45 degrees is the same as the angle pi by 4. And so we end up converting the special triangles into their radian angle equivalents, pi by 6, pi by 3, and pi by 4. But it still works out to be the same way in the sense that you might say, for example, if I said, what is the sine of pi by 6? Okay, here's my angle of interest, pi by 6 sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so in this case that would be opposite which is 1 over hypotenuse which is 2. The cosine of pi by 6 in this case here's the angle of interest cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so the adjacent side is square root of 3 and the hypotenuse is 2 and so I would leave that in its exact form and I could do the sine cosine or tangent of any of these angles and I could also do the reciprocal trigonometric functions I could do so sine cosine and tangent or I could do cosecant secant or cotangent for any of those okay and that's it fairly short lesson the first set of homework here, page 314, is really just a review of some of your material from the 3U course. Uh, some of the stuff I've already spoken about using special triangles, SOHCAHTOA, uh, something called the related acute angle, the cast rule. And then page 320 is really focusing more on that whole radian and degree equivalence and how you can make use of that.